I believe that the Islam religion is the best religion for our people. Constantinople, 1916. On this day, a ray of light would shine forth and pace through the shadowy realms of earthly existence, delivering the urgent news of a beautiful infant child. From birth, she would proudly carry the name Effet bint Muhammad bin Abdullah Athunayan. She would soon grow and blossom into the world like a compassionate tree bearing fruit for the hungry and granting gentle shade for the weak and weary. They, in turn, will learn to love and respect her for her generosity and courage. Her birth coincided with the final phase of Ottoman rule over the Muslim world. Efat was the daughter of an Arab father, Muhammad bin Abdullah, who was a medical officer in the Ottoman army. He belonged to the Athunayan branch of the Al Saud tribe, while her mother, Asia, was a Turkish woman with Hungarian or Circassian ancestry. Like a rose being uprooted from the firm and reliable foundation of family life, Efat would soon be confronted with the harsh reality of orphanhood. Her father died during World War II and besides the emotional and psychological impact this may have had on the young child and her siblings, the death of her father deprived the family of stability, protection and provision. Soon the household fell into abject poverty and their mother, newly widowed, was in charge with the overwhelming challenge of single-handedly raising and providing for four young orphans. Her mother soon entrusted Effat under the custody and care of her sister, Jauharan. Yet despite her youth, Effat became a dedicated care provider for her aunt, who was disabled and wheelchair-bound. In what was to follow of a childhood deprived of normality, the young orphan began to show signs of an awakened intelligence and a sincere love for learning. Efat received her formal education in Istanbul while still in the custody of her aunt, Jauharan. She had spent much of her childhood in a state of severe poverty, often resorting to wearing shoes that were stuffed with paper where they had once been leather soles. This she did in order to walk to school and to secure an education for herself. Through hard work and by virtue of perseverance and dedication, the impoverished orphan worked long and hard throughout her childhood towards what would eventually culminate in a teacher's license. This she had earned by the tender age of 16 years old. In the year 1925, Efat and her aunt Jauharan made contact with family back in Arabia. They were seeking help and assistance towards furnishing some provisions for the performance of the Great Hajj in Mecca. Shortly thereafter, the young woman, accompanied by her aunt, had entered the holy city to perform their intended pilgrimage. They were met and entertained by a young prince belonging to the Al Saud clan. His name was Faisal bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. In what would later be recounted as a memorable first encounter between Effat and the charming young prince, 
the possibility of marriage seemed very likely as news began to reach the Al Saud family that Prince Faisal had expressed an interest in a young woman. Though rather inconveniently, the two young souls did not understand one another. Given the fact that Effat was born and raised in Constantinople and knew no Arabic, while Prince Faisal had no prior knowledge of the Turkish language. However, this did not prevent the marriage from taking place, and in the year 1932, they celebrated their wedding in Jeddah before settling down in Mecca. They would spend some time communicating to one another through the agency of translators before eventually learning each other's language. Yet it came to be known of Queen Effat that she spoke with a distinct Turkish accent, for which she came to be known as al Turkiya, a title which she was not ashamed of, having even taught four of her eldest children to speak Turkish fluently. The union between King Faisal and his wife Queen Effat brought forth a beautiful arrangement of children including five daughters and four sons. Her marriage into the royal house of Al Saud did not permit her to abandon those that were less fortunate than she had been. To the contrary, such privilege only enabled her to advocate for the less fortunate. She was a prolific and insatiable philanthropist who dedicated all of her resources towards the advancement of education, enablement and care for the most vulnerable members of society. Among her numerous philanthropic projects, she promoted literacy, libraries, maternal care, nurseries, legal aid and assistance for the blind. She even made provisions for those that had been afflicted with Down syndrome. Queen Effat's philanthropism came as a natural consequence of her upbringing. She grew up an orphan, suffering the trials of poverty, while providing care and assistance to her disabled aunt, Johharan. It is therefore of little surprise that she was an ardent advocate and patron for charitable and altruistic works in society, especially towards the disabled and disadvantaged. Perhaps her most notable and outstanding contribution within the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia began during the 1950s, when she embarked on a very ambitious and grand scheme to build and promote the establishment of the Kingdom's very first schools and colleges for girls. Among her earliest efforts were the establishment of the Kulliyatul Banat in Riyadh and the inauguration of Darul Hanan in Jeddah. Both projects suffered from a lack of public support and faced much opposition from the outset. The initiatives were very clear failures at the beginning. However, by virtue of dedication and confidence in what these projects would bring forth for future generations, Queen Effat continued to build her dream and promote the education of girls in the kingdom. Far from being discouraged and defeated, Queen Effat increasingly immersed herself in her activism and advocacy for female education. She followed her initial failure by developing organizations such as the Nahda al Saudiya, which was a Saudi progressive association established to deliver free classes on reading and writing for illiterate women in Riyadh. The initiative also included various subjects ranging from hygiene and childcare to foreign languages and typewriting. Much to her credit, Queen Effat did not rely on her husband's wealth or the royal treasury to cover her expenses. Instead, she had hired an Egyptian solicitor and began to invest in hotels and property, registering the titles in her own name. These astute and very practical business arrangements all initiated and managed independently from her husband, 
resulted in her being directly able to fund and support her projects independent of others. In 1999, Queen Effat inaugurated a college wherein students were able to study various subjects and sciences, ranging from business administration, psychology, architecture and engineering. The lectures were delivered entirely in the English language and the curriculum was adapted to the liberal arts model. Female students at this institution of higher learning were for the first time in the history of the kingdom able to major in any of the aforementioned sciences. It was the shared belief and conviction of Queen Effat and King Faisal that no field of study was beyond the reach of women, provided that equal access to education was available and there was a presence and dedication and desire in the mind of the students. My mother, Queen Effat, believed that women are the builders of nations. And she saw that the best way to build our nation and the world was to educate women. And that is where our journey at Effat University began. Today, you graduate. Congratulations. Some of you might be wondering what is out there. Who am I? What am I going to do? But I am here to tell you that there is no need to worry because I know that wherever you end up in the world, you will not fear exploring the unknown. You will, not, you will be able to get back up when you fall, and you will fall. You, uh, you will achieve all that you aim to achieve. I know this because I, I have seen it. I have seen it with every graduating class at Effet University. I have seen it in myself, my sisters, and I have seen it in my daughters and nieces. Queen Effat was an exceptional woman, highly intelligent and entirely confident in herself. She was the first Saudi royal to object to the wearing of niqab, although she always wore a hijab to cover her head whenever she was seen in public. Yet this did not take away from her love and respect of Islam, for she was faithful to her religion and loyal to her people. A well-informed and well-read intellectual, she maintained a keen interest on international and local affairs. During World War II, Queen Effat ordered maps and atlases to be put up on the walls of Masajid in order for the people to keep track of the events and developments as the Allied forces gained ground. King Faisal's deference and admiration for his high-minded and elegant queen was unmistakable and clear for all to see. It is a well-attested fact that not only did Queen Effat attend exclusive administrative gatherings, he would almost always let her walk ahead of him. This was not only a testament to his deep affection and love for his wife, but it was also a worthy tribute to her apparent brilliance and charisma. Yet despite her distinctive characteristics, and impressive achievements. Behind the palace walls, she served her family every way as ordinarily as any other woman would. There in the confines of her private life, she remained a mother to nine children, a caretaker and confidant to her husband, the King of Saudi Arabia. Yes, it truly takes an extraordinary queen to mend her own clothes and to arrange the curtains of her home. She took great pleasure in tending to her garden roses, a pastime that is somewhat symbolic of her work and service onto a different kind of rose garden beyond the palace gates. The very first Saudi consort to have been honored with the title of queen, and meritoriously so, Queen Effat bin Muhammad Al Thunayan was truly a desert diamond. Endowed with exceptional foresight and profound insight, her generous contribution to society has transformed the lives of millions and will inspire many more to pursue the highest attainable goals in education and self improvement. 
the late Queen's motto during her lifetime were the following words Educate yourselves, be good mothers, raise good Saudi citizens, build your country. The mother can be a school in herself if you prepare her well. Queen F had sadly died in hospital following an unsuccessful open heart surgery. She passed away on February the 17th, 2000. Her Janaza prayer was performed after the Friday prayer. She was then buried in Riyadh. Strive for justice, for I have learned that justice is power. Show compassion, for I have learned that compassion is not born of weakness, but of strength. Seek knowledge, for I have learned that knowledge is wealth. Give knowledge freely, for I have learned that knowledge is freedom.